Hey everyone, this is Kala Hale from Destination Thrills, and today we are here with another coaster duel. And if you've been watching this channel a lot recently, you know we've been doing a lot of coaster tournaments. We've just had the RMC coaster tournament, the European coaster tournament, even parks like Cedar Point and Six Flags St. Louis we've done tournaments for. But in the past, we have also done one-on-one -on -one coaster duels. We've had Millennium Force versus Top Thrill Dragster, and even El Toro versus The Voyage, the first ever coaster duel. So we've been doing a lot of tournaments. I'm deciding let's go ahead and mix it up and bring back some one versus one coaster duels. And the one that we are doing today, I am very excited for. I have actually not had the chance to ride either of these coasters. So I really don't have a good feel on which ride is actually the best. So. This will help me determine what the public opinion of both of these coasters are. And trust me, we have two amazing Giga coasters, both located in the Eastern United States, and both have carved a name for themselves in the coaster enthusiast community. So let's get into our coasters. Our first coaster located in Carowinds in Charlotte, North Carolina, built in 2015 by Bulliger and Mabliard, standing at 300 and 25 feet tall. The coaster reaches a top speed of 95 miles per hour and goes along a total track length of 6,602 feet. We have Fury 325 and Fury's opponent from King's Dominion in Doswell, Virginia. Built by Intamin Rides in 2010, this coaster stands at 305 feet, hits a max speed of 90 miles per hour, and travels over 5,100 feet of track. We have Intimidator 305. Like I said earlier, both of these coasters have made a name for themselves in this industry. They're known for being really tall and really fast and providing some intense rides. So I'm intrigued to see which coaster will come out on top. I know people who like those super intense coasters really prefer I-305 just from those positive strong G-forces, but Fury 325 actually has a better mix of elements, at least that's what it appears. Not only do you have some good moments of airtime, but it also throws in moments of low to the ground speeds and those twisty turns. So we are going to let the voters decide which one of these coasters will reign supreme. Now, how our one-on-one -on -one matchups work is we give you seven categories to vote on. These categories will include stuff like best airtime, most intense, and the coaster with the most votes in that category will win two points for each category they win. Then we add in a final eighth question that asks which coaster is best overall. And we have weighted this question at five points. So the coaster that can tally the most votes in this last category will win a total of five points. There are 19 points up for grabs, so the first coaster that reaches 10 points will be the winner of our coaster duel. Now, to be honest, I really don't know if I have a good feel on who will win this battle, especially since I haven't ridden any of these coasters myself. Now, the public perception, there seems to be a lot of fans of Fury 325, but there's also those hardcore Intimidator lovers as well. So I'm not really sure who's going to win this battle, but if I had to place my bet, it would be on Fury 325. Okay, now before we get into our results, I just want to remind everyone, if you want to participate in future Coaster Duels, just head over to our Instagram page, give it a like. This is where we post all of the information on our upcoming tournaments and battles. And of course, that is where we do the voting. So if you do want to participate, just go ahead and give our Instagram page a like. It is at Destination Thrills. Okay, let's get into our results here. Okay, our first category was best first drop. Now, again, I have not been on these coasters, so it's gonna be hard for me to analyze which one I think is better. Obviously, Fury 325 has the little bit longer drop and it has a 81 degree descent. However, Intimidator has those longer trains, so you probably get a little bit more whip in the back seat. If I had to make my guess, I think Fury 325 though will have the edge in this category. And so the winner of best first drop is Fury 325 with 69% of the votes. So over two thirds of the vote going to Fury and Fury earns the first two points. I think it is a good sign for Fury that that many people voted for it to have the best first drop. I think this first question is kind of a good sample size of how many Fury fans are out there versus how many Intimidator fans are out there. So 
This is looking good so far for Fury 325, but we still have several more categories to go. Our next category is the most intense, and when you think of Giga Coasters, this is a very important category because when you think of super tall, fast coasters, you just expect them to be really intense because they have all of that energy behind them. Now, as many coaster enthusiasts know, that is definitely not always the case. Sometimes these smaller, shorter, and slower coasters actually have the most intensity just because their layouts are more compact. So just because Fury 325 is a little bit taller and a little bit faster doesn't mean it's gonna be the most intense. And from what I have heard, the G-forces on Intimidator 305 are nuts. So I have a really good feeling that Intimidator, just from what I've been hearing, is probably gonna be voted most intense. And let's see what the winner is. And not even close, Intimidator 305 wins with 86% of the vote. Intimidator 305 now ties the score at two apiece. Moving on to the next category, we have the best feeling of speed. This one, I think Intimidator has the advantage just because most of its elements are close to the ground. And just from my perspective, all the elements that happen really close to the ground, just because you're going so fast and you have objects to kind of see whizzing by you, it gives you that better sense of speed when you're that close to the ground. Whereas when you're high up, you just, everything looks so far away, it's hard to really get a judge for how fast you are going. So. I think Intimidator 305 with those low to the ground turns are gonna have that better sense of speed. Okay, so our winner of the best feeling of speed category goes to kind of a tighter race, but it goes to Intimidator 305 with 59% of the vote. So Intimidator 305 takes the lead now four to two over Fury 325, but we have plenty more categories to go here. All right, our next category is best airtime. And I like to throw this category in there because a lot of what coaster enthusiasts love about coasters is airtime. That just gives you that exhilarating stomach dropping feeling that we all love. And I think when a coaster can incorporate these elements, it just makes for a super fun ride. And most of the coasters that are at the top of people's list have good airtime with them. Not all of them, but most of them have good airtime. So I think it's a very important category that I like to add in these coaster battles. Now, from what I've heard and from looking at the layouts and watching the POVs, it looks that Fury 325 has more airtime. I don't know if it has the best or strongest airtime, but it certainly has more airtime moments. Intimidator 305 does have some airtime hills, but not enough compared to Fury 325. And I haven't heard a lot of coaster enthusiasts saying that Intimidator 305 is some magical airtime machine. It's more known for that low to the ground intense maneuvers. Whereas Fury 325 has those camelbacks toward the end that give it that extra airtime. So the winner of best airtime is Fury 325 with 86% of the vote. So Fury wins by a huge margin and now both coasters have four points as we head into our fifth category. All right, this next one is most comfortable. And I just have to say from riding Intamins and B&Ms, B&Ms are such comfortable machines. Sometimes they get flack for being too comfortable because it takes away from some of the intensity of the ride. But if you're looking for a smooth machine, B&Ms are typically the way to go. I, obviously you've heard of the B&M rattle, some coasters have that, but a majority of their coasters are very smooth machines and they're very gentle on the body. B&M hypers and Giga models all use Use these clamshell restraints that are very freeing for the upper body and fury 325 takes advantage of this and so i'm expecting it to be a very comfortable ride intimidator 305 is a little bit tougher to judge i know it uses those over the shoulder restraints and some people complain that they are uncomfortable also the strong positive g-forces that cause people to black out i'm sure most of them won't find that very comfortable as well so I think Fury 325 does have the advantage in this category. And let's see who won. And my suspicion was right. Fury 325 wins with a huge margin, 91% of the vote over Intimidator, and now takes a six to four lead. But this race is closer than ever. Both coasters still have a really good shot at taking this win. So let's go on to the sixth category, which is which coaster provides the most fulfilling ride duration? The reason why I word the question like this, fulfilling ride duration is, I didn't want people to just look up to see which one had the best ride duration because we all know that, yes, some coasters can be shorter technically by length, 
or by ride time, but if you can jam pack a lot of elements and maneuvers within the shorter ride duration, it can give the coaster a feeling that it is longer than these other coasters that have these really long track lengths. Sometimes what is included in this length is a long brake run, so just because it is longer in its stats doesn't mean it is a fulfilling ride duration. Now, looking at the stats, it looks like Fury 325 does have a longer duration, so because I haven't ridden both of these coasters, I don't really know which one seems most fulfilling, but I have a feeling that Fury does have the advantage in this category. Okay, and the winner of the most fulfilling ride duration is... Fury 325 with 80% of the vote, and now Fury has an 8 to 4 lead over Intimidator 305. We move into our final category, which coaster is the best looking? And I really debated on adding this question in there. Typically, I'll pick a similar element and have them vote which one is the best. So if both coasters have a 0G roll, I'll say which one has the best 0G roll. But it was hard for me to pick an element after the first drop that was similar between both rides. So because of that, I decided to go with which coaster is the best looking. And this was actually a category that I could judge on because I can see pictures of both rides and I'm sure they both look different in person, probably more impressive. I remember when I saw Top Thrill Dragster and Millennium Force for the first time when I went to Cedar Point and both were so awe-inspiring seeing them in person, just how tall they are. And so I can only imagine both of these coasters when you get to see them up close and personal that they just seem like they are monsters. Now, Fury 325 has the color, it has a look, it has the super cool theme. I even like the trains for Fury 325, so I really think that Fury 325 is the best looking coaster. But I'm sure maybe those who like the color red or are big NASCAR racing fans might choose Intimidator 305. Now, if Fury 325 does win this category, then it does win because it will have the 10 points needed to win the battle. And if Intimidator 305 wins this, then this battle will be decided by the final best overall category. So let's see who wins this important category of best looking, and it is... With 66% of the vote, it is Fury 325, the winner of our coaster duel. So Fury 325 does defeat Intimidator 305. And let's just quickly glance at the final category best overall. And Fury 325 wins that one as well with 69% of the vote. So our final score was Fury 325 with 15 points and Intimidator 305 with four points. So a big victory for Fury. And like I said in the beginning, not really surprising as well. There's just so many fans of this coaster. And I'm really debating on possibly doing a Fury versus Steel Vengeance one-on-one -on -one matchup just because I know both coasters have such a huge fan base. So I have some intrigue there to see which coaster might come out on top. So I don't know, maybe a coaster duel we'll have to do in the near future. What I do know is that more coaster tournaments and duels are coming very soon, possibly some park tournaments and park duels as well. So be on the lookout for that. I will announce that our next tournament will be a 64 coaster bracket of the best coasters from North America. I'm very excited to do this tournament. I'm a little nervous because I haven't done a tournament on this scale, but trust me, I'm very excited about that. Now I will be trying to choose 64 coasters to compete in this tournament, 64 of the best coasters from North America. That is not gonna be an easy thing to do and I'm sure I'm gonna leave out a lot of good coasters so if you have any suggestions on which coasters you think should participate in that tournament, please leave them in the comment below. Now I have a lot of work to do as far as seeding is concerned for the tournament, so I probably won't start posting matches or the bracket until next weekend. So if you're watching it on Monday when this video is released, it'll be the upcoming weekend that I will try to post a bracket for this tournament. Also, don't forget to like our Instagram page because I will post the bracket and all the information on that tournament there in the days to come. So thank you all for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing more coaster duels and tournaments, I will be leaving the complete playlist in the description below, as well as the last tournament that we did in the card above. And don't forget to subscribe to Destination Thrills, the destination for all the latest theme park news, coaster battles, and content. Again, Fury 325 defeats Intimidator 305 15 to 4. Congratulations to Carowinds and all the Fury fans out there. Thank you for voting and thank you for watching this video. I'm Cullah Hale. Stay safe and have a good one.